Good morning. Uh, today, I shall take off from where I had left off yesterday. And let me show you a flame spray gun, how it operates. Though this talks of metal spray, yet it is used for many other things also. This is a flame spray gun. What you have here are the fuel inlets and here you have the either the solution or the powder whichever you wish to do. This is a multifaceted one. Let me proceed with it. Now here you see the flame being sprayed. This is the flame. I had drawn the diagram where I had said how it is used. So, here is the flame you can see they are adjusting the flame height, they are adjusting the oxygen fuel ratio and then the feedstock. Now, I am using you this is a disclaimer. I am using the YouTube video since this is under Creative Commons and I acknowledge the contribution of whoever it is. Since this lecture is a not for profit lecture, I am told I can use it. Look at the nozzle. This is how the nozzle is. Let us go to a place where they are going to really trigger it. Yes. Here is how the flame spray works. Now, if you think and it is coating all these substrates. Now, look at him. He is holding the whole substrate by the pliers and coating the substrate with whatever material is coming in from the feedstock over here. He is simply holding it by hand. You see this flame spraying is used for example, jet aircrafts, they have turbine engines, lots of blades. The dust of the air does erode the air the jet engine blades. They are restored using such flame spray techniques. In jet engine, they use yttria stabilized zirconia as a coating and so uh, they are they have used two inlets for the feed stock. So, one must be yttrium nitrate and the other must be zirconium nitrate and they burn up over here. This is the basics of the flame spray. Now, let me try and look go to its application. This is where they are coating refractory metal on this particular substrate. This is possibly an eroded cover of an engine and they are resurfacing it so that they do not have to get a new one and it makes the whole thing much more harder. Coatings, especially ceramic coatings are used in a wide range of applications including automotive systems. 
even in boilers, power generation equipment, chemical process equipment, aircraft engines. They are even used for hardening the surfaces of the bridges, rollers, even dental ceramics. Amongst these thermal spray techniques, I have talked of thermal spray and I briefly touched yesterday on some other spray which I told as high velocity oxygen fuel spray, high velocity oxygen fuel spray. Uh, high velocity oxygen fuel spray. Now, the thing is why HVOF? HVOF means that when we use it, the velocity of the gas is so high that the kinetic energy imparted to the molecules or to the particles generated in the flame is very high. With that high kinetic energy, if it goes and hits the surface, it just splats. The particle under high velocity, I will come to it, it just flattens out. So, there are a couple of things here, coverage is high. Secondly, the bonding between surface and particle is very high. This was initially developed for depositing very hard metal, metal carbides uh, on surfaces to prevent mechanical wear. Today, carbides like say the tungsten carbide cobalt coatings are routinely used for making such coatings using HVOF. The advantages are high density, very high bond strength, which I had said earlier and depending on the materials very high corrosion resistance. Very high bond strength implies very high erosion resistance. Now, this is happens simply because the particles are accelerated at very, very high speeds onto the substrate surface. Now, this HVOF gun, how does it look like?
this is a reasonably large body. These are air holes, I will say what is what pumps through. This is a reasonably large long length of a blow torch, 6 to 8 inches. Air is pumped through the outer annular jackets. The fuel, it can be acetylene, it can be uh, hydrogen, is pumped through these two and the powder and carrier gases are pumped through the central one. Uh, the powder is fed axially because if you look at the now gas flow patterns, it will go over here, and the powder contains a carrier gas is injected out here. Now, what happens over here is the powder, the gases as you saw they burn in a flame over here. This powder is rapidly thrown through this one melting or may or may not occur. Now, what happens over here is because there is a very high pressure in the combustion chamber, over here shock waves are created. Over here shock waves are created because the gases are exiting this narrow barrel at the very high pressures, the particles that come out here have very, very high kinetic energy. They can come out at speeds in excess of 700 kilometers per hour, almost touching the value of sound. So, if such a particle with but very fine particles, sub micron size, possibly na nano size 50 to 30 nm, possessing the speed go and hit a substrate. This will immediately hit and splat, transferring all its kinetic energy into the potential energy and bonding very well. And as this, this gun is rastered up and down, we will get a very, very dense, hard, uniform coating. Now, I repeat over here, the powders which go through this, this area, the residence time is very small. They do not melt. If they had melted, it would have been a problem. They soften. And because they are soft, this powder is plastic. It is as if you are going to chewing gum and you are chewing between your teeth. It just flattens out. 
this is exactly what happens over here where it flattens out where the semi plastic vapors come and hit and they give a very very dense coating. This AVOF spray is used for carbide coatings as carbides are very tough hard hence wear resistant. And these carbide coatings are frequently they are so high temperature melting that high velocity oxyfuel deposition is the only way out. Uh, let me try and show we show you over here. I had shown this one last day. Let me show you this. This is a much more detailed one. Again, this is YouTube, open source. I do not, I am not holding anything. This is a huge cylinder whose surface is being reclaimed. And high velocity oxyfoil spray is being used to coat this cylinder with yttria stabilized zirconia. If I go into full screen mode, you will see that the ceramic is being coated on this particular plate surface. Yeah. So, As you proceed, you can see the huge chamber that is being used to co for coating. Now, this is the second level of coating being done. You saw the first layer being coated, here you are seeing the second layer being coated. Now, the temperature of the flame you can see is blinding white. So, essentially it has to be somewhere near 3000 degrees centigrade or so. That would have been sufficient to melt any material on which it is being coated. But the whole trick is that the flame is held at a distance the actual flame never touches the surface as I had shown over here on this particular diagram over here and as a result the drum on which you are coating never gets hot. This is a huge drum which you can see over here is being coated by high velocity oxyfoil spray. Uh, now, let me take up another spray technology which is also extensively used by the industry. When you are talking of ceramics, mechanical wear, abrasion resistance, wear resistance, corrosion resistance, fundamentally the coating comes down to carbides, nitrides, and now today carbonitrides. Now, in this high velocity oxyfuel spray, high velocity oxyfuel spray which I have over here, the, the there is a flame which is going at 3000 degrees centigrade almost. The color was blinding white. But today, 
we need ceramic coatings on surfaces which cannot withstand that high temperature. Even today we have plastic sheets being coated with ceramics. The question is how has it been possible? One of the techniques that is or the technique is what we call the D gun or detonation gun. Detonation gun technique. In this particular technique, what we have is a very simple one is a closed cylinder is a closed cylinder pretty long uh, I have two inlets one for the fuel and one for the oxygen. This line is for later use that is after the deposition has been done which is nitrogen purge line. Over here you have a spark plug. All of you know a spark plug in an automobile is used to ignite the fuel in an automobile. Uh, this jacket is water cooled. The powder is put through this inlet and after a certain amount of powder has been put in the spark plug is fired. Just as in the automobile engine the spark plug fires and the combustion process generates huge pressures. Similarly due to the presence of the fuel oxygen and the spark plug arc whatever is this powder this powder is accelerated with a huge velocity here the nominal temperature can be 4000 degrees centigrade it is blinding white in here so when the explosion occurs the powders which are lying around are accelerated at very high speeds onto the substrate surface. Here again the kinetic energy of the particles is very high much higher than in HVOF and that particle goes and hits the substrate spreads forms a bond and gradually we get thicker and thicker coatings on the surface we wash to we wish to protect. The nitrogen gas purge line is used so that after the particular set of run is over with this D gun, the nitrogen gas is used to purge the whole interior of any contaminants. Even oxygen is a contaminant 
because if it is left unknown, it can lead to huge explosions. Using the detonation gun, people have deposited copper, aluminium, silicon carbide, aluminium, titanium, silicon carbide coatings, and as I said, tungsten, cobalt, crop, chromium coatings. These co materials are very hard, they are accelerated by the D gun and as they travel down, they, assume, they get a very, very high kinetic energy. They come out of the barrel and impact on the surface of the substrate. The kinetic energy of the hot powder is converted to potential energy and a bond is formed. Now, you have to remember in this spark plug, you have to fire again and again like your motor vehicle, like your scooter like your motorcycle or the car. This spark plug goes on and on firing and firing so that more and more materials or the powder in a very high temperature in a high velocity state comes and hits the substrate generating a smooth uniform coating. Now, why the D gun? With the detonation gun, the powder sizes that we require are somewhere in the range of 10 to 100 microns. Detonation gun is not for submicron powders because they will tend to fly off. <coughs> the distance between the detonation gun and the substrate is anything from 60 to 120 centimeters depending on your need. The detonation deposit are very fast. Uh, this is a killer of, of gases, huge amounts of gases are used, but certainly the amount of gas used here is definitely lower than HVR process. You can choose as the air fuel is air and hydrogen, air and acetylene. It is only that the air hydrogen mixture gives a much higher temperature, much larger shock waves than the acetylene oxygen and hence you do get a very uniform coating. The other big advantage of the Degan process is the substrate can be a polymer. Because this detonation gun is at least 60 to 120 centimeters away and it is only the particles which will go and hit the substrate. The temperature there really rises above 100 degrees centigrade if we can really model the whole thing properly. Uh, the noise of the de detonation gun is very huge because it is keeping on continuously firing. Using this detonation gun, using a combination of the HVOF spray and the detonation gun, very specific coatings can be generated using powders solutions, even wires, like molybdenum wire coatings are required at many places. And the way to go is 
in such cases, most cases it would be detonated de 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 gun if you have one or the high velocity of the oxygen, oxygen fuel spray. With this, I come to a close with ceramic thin films by a gun process that is AVR spray, thermal spray, detonated gun spray and this is where I will stop because these are the three principal areas. What I shall now take up is again another way of coating. If you remember I had stated the diagram I do not know where it is now. I had stated dip coat, spin coat, uh, spray pyrolysis coat, I have talked of this. In the other end of the diagram was a particular right acronym CVD, chemical vapor deposition. Now to a practicing ceramist, he will be happy with spray pyrolyzed, but then today we are, being, we are finding that we are throwing many things away simply because we do not know how to re reutilize them. So, I tried it with a broken brick, everything. This chemical vapor deposition, it is a process where chemical precursors are transported in vapor phase and there they react to form a film. There they react to form a film. Now you will say, hey, the flame process was similar, similar. I was also transporting in the vapor phase the solution. So how is it? True, but CVD is a term we have taken from semiconductor industry who uses chemical vapor deposition process for fabrication of its different devices. When I talk of semiconductor industry, it reminds me of the different processes I talked of in physical vapor deposition also. Now, which is better CVD or PVD? There is no clean cut answer to that. The whole thing is in CVD you have got a reaction time. The two materials approach as solvent or solution, they dry up in the flame and then and then they get deposited. However, in PVD one of the biggest problems which I talked of yesterday was composition control. Because in physical vapor deposition you are use either using an electron beam or argon ion beam as in RF magnetron sputtering to generate these very active surfaces. Secondly, in the CVD because the carrier gas is flowing in, it can 
also um, help deposit many materials in nooks and crannies and in sharp corners which would have not been otherwise possible. The other advantage of CVD is it can be used to coat even plastics because in CVD is merely a wave front of shock waves which are going on. Where did I keep it? And hence, it is simply the kinetic energy which is being converted to the potential energy. Hence, CVD coating can be done on plastics so that the surface becomes hard and you can reuse that plastic for other use. In PVD, there are a large number of parameters which are have to be handled and they are not yet very well understood. In CVD, what happens? Uh, I have to request you to bear with me while I finish the drawing. Let this be the substrate. Uh, reactant gases are flowing in over here. There is a boundary layer above the substrate of the surface. There is a boundary layer at the type of the surface. This part is the interface and the boundary layer let us say spreads right up to here. So, what we have is the interface place, the boundary layer Mm, what do I say? Okay, let me keep it as a boundary layer. This area. So the gases come in. They are attracted to the substrate surface. Now here, let me label this as A. Here, what is happening is the reactants. This reactant gases are diffusing in through the boundary layer. They are diffusing in through the boundary layer. At B, the gases are adsorbing on the surface. At C, over here, the chemical reaction is occurring. Over here at C and uh, after this, the reactant gases which are generated are simply moved over through the boundary layer and taken out. This is a laminar CVD I have drawn. Now, the whole diagram is not that easy. For example, Let me change this. <coughs> ah. 
This is better. What does it say? This says that here where there was a laminar flow, as it comes to the surface closer to here, the layer holds back creating this pattern. So, here I have the boundary layer. The boundary layer is impeding the flow of the reactant gases and the reactant gases need time to reach the surface. Now, this is the rate limiting step. This is the absolutely rate limiting step that is the availability of the reactant gases to come through the boundary layer, cross the interface and react at the substrate surface. This is a, is a rate limiting step and after that reaction has occurred, what we have is the, react, the reaction products, the gases, they go off. The products have to be dissolved from the surface and they have to diffuse back through the boundary layer and flow out of the chamber. Now, at times, due to this sort of a flow regime, due to the reaction with the substrate or whatever, we do face problems of non-uniform coating. In a normal reactor, what we have are these are substrates 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. The reactant gases come in and they flow out. And hence you can see in many cases I may not have a laminar flow. And that is being compounded by the question is, is the interface reaction rate limiting the process? One of the ways of determining if the interface reaction rate is limiting the process is to tilt the substrate that alters the direction of the gas and that helps at times. Or what we can do is if this is a substrate, this is the interface layer. We can increase the speed of gas. We can increase the speed, the flow rate or increase the speed of gas. In that case, what happens is very fast diffusion will occur and then the formation of the coating is only limited by any surface reaction. In order to avoid this problem where the boundary layer gets affected, all I did was increase the speed of the gas. And when I increase the flow rate, the boundary layer shall thin up, the gases 
will be able to accelerate and hit the substrate. But the question then comes, is the, is the re surface reaction that fast? What would happen if I had low gas velocity instead of this high gas? Suppose I had changed it, I had gone to a low gas velocity. What would have happened is this, this is a substrate, the boundary layer would be very thick, the boundary layer would be very thick and as a result, the diffusion would be very slow. So, in CBD, these factors play a huge role. Uh, if I do an Arrhenius plot, This is the deposition rate 1 upon t. This area is flat because gas rate or other gas phase transport is very slow. However, over here surface reaction is initiated in this particular reaction, in this particular one. If I increase the reacted concentration, I will expect a higher thickness of the film which is generated. But suppose at times, which is for real, extensive nucleation occurs in the gas phase. What would happen? What I would happen is extensive nucleation has occurred in the gas phase. You have brought it down to this particular temperature. So, it the nucleated materials which you have just checked in the other method, they, their size would remain the same. So, surface reaction is a major roadblock in coatings and one has to carefully control the gas feed rates you are you will be doing. In CBD, the way to deliver is you have a bubbler, you bubble air through it, the liquid is there, the bubbles go off, they are collected and then it is sent to the process chamber. The liquid here can be alcohol, water, TUS system, where you want a silica coating, plain and simple silica coating. So, all you need here is sufficient amount of enough water in proper ratio, so that the, they boil off as very, as very simple as that. as a carrier gas is sent through. 
So, what we would have is basically in such a system a solution tank, this would feed the atomizer and this would be pumped into the evacuated chamber where the thin film is deposited on the metal. Now, one thing in such cases deposition can occur anywhere not necessarily in the substrate surface also. So, tomorrow in the next class I shall take off from this point where we have got CVD reactors for deposition of thin coatings and explore the different techniques of advantages disadvantages of chemical vapor deposition. If I sum up today what I have covered is up to now gone over the thermal spray looked at the HV high, velo high velocity oxy fuel spray looked at the detonation gun coating process and are now on chemical vapor deposition techniques. Amongst the HVOF and the detonation gun as I said the detonation gun coating can be used to coat even plastics because there is a particle which is accelerated and hits the surface the plastic has to be able to withstand the impact. The kinetic energy is transformed to potential energy and the detonated gun particle will simply form a very very good bond. Whereas in HVOF there is some increase in temperature of the substrate it can be 4 or 500 degree centigrade. So, HVOF can be used to coat on anything except plastics and polymer based composites. These are done as a measure cost saving measure because the surfaces are very smooth you do not have to re purchase a new material the bonding strength is, is excellent and coating uniformity is superb. I shall take off from here in the next class.